Hi again everyone, I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Carol and here's her story. Hi Ollie. This, I made a, a PayPal contribution today. This is a quite long email so I hope my contribution is adequate for today. My name is Carol. Carol stuff on YouTube. You may use my name and YouTube name. Before you start reading my story, I'd like to apologize to Zoltar, Becca Steps, and other subscribers who were offended by my comments on a recent video. I'll comment, but only have positive comments. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything. I'm going to try to live by that. I'm not sure where to start. I have an adult son who displays narcissistic behaviors. I'm not sure if he is, but I'm wondering if I caused it. Anyway, before I get to my current situation, I'll give you my background of my own abuse with my mother. That'll give you a sense of why I think it's my fault my son is so cruel to me. My mother, who's deceased now, was born in Jamaica, West Indies. She was one of, tw of 12 children. I was told by all my family that she was the golden child of her father because she was bright. Her father boarded her to a great school in Jamaica. After she graduated high school in Jamaica, her father sent her to London to further her studies. She excelled in law and got her CPA. While in London, she met my father, who was a Jamaican living in London. They got married in London. Nine months after their marriage, they conceived my brother Lloyd. After three years, they had another baby, me. My mom, my, mommy told me later that she didn't know she was pregnant and just went to the hospital for a checkup due to feeling so sick. Hospital told her she was three months pregnant. Because she was only 95 pounds and still having her menses, she was hospitalized for three months. Well, my mother said she was having problems with our father. So when she was eight months pregnant with me, she decided to go back to Jamaica to, to the comfort of her father to have the baby. This was 1960. She booked a passage on a ship for herself and my three-year-old brother. She complained that she couldn't have put my three-year-old brother in the top bunk, so she had to climb on the top bunk with an eight-month pregnancy. Within a day of returning to Jamaica, she gave birth to me. I heard loads of stories that I was born on a ship, but that was not true. I have my birth certificate indicating I was born in a Jamaican hospital. This confusion was caused as the ship took weeks from England to Jamaica in 1960. Moving on, I have memories from when I was two and a half years old. I have never, I have never remembered my mother giving me a kiss or saying she loves me. At first I thought, this, thought it was normal, but I saw her hug and kiss my brother and other people. As a toddler, I remember my mom daily squeezing my nose bridge. It felt like for hours. But as a kid, it may have been only 10 minutes, two times a day. I don't know what it is with black mothers squeezing their, squeezing their kids' nose, noses. But Jesus, you are, you are like the, the umpteenth person who's told me that their mothers would do that to them. In my early, in my early teens, I got, it got annoying and I protested that it hurts and I'm not sure about the purpose. She proudly told me she was doing it as my nose was flat. I mean, it's so racist. I mean, it's it's so racist on themselves. I mean, sometimes black people, they have a flatter nose and they squeeze in their nose to, to, to take away typical black features and like, I mean, this is part of the internal struggle black people have with themselves a lot of times, especially black women. That made me feel like shit. That's when I started hating myself. She combed my hair in a certain way, which I hated. As a teenager in high school, I started combing my hair the way I liked it, ponytail. That caused her to tell me it didn't fit in my face, didn't fit my face. She even encouraged me to wear blush, rouge then, because I needed because I need makeup to make me look better. I cannot tell you how many things she did to me in this, in this first story. All I can say now, I was almost a slave to her. This was horrible as she was 
an upper class Jamaican with a live-in helper called a maid then. When I was at my neighbor's house playing with their kids, she shout my name to come to her. They always love calling, yelling at you like an animal. They call you like a dog. When I went to her, she'd be sitting on the veranda and told me to get her a glass of water. Ugh. During my high school break, some of my cousins would spend the holidays with us. Mommy worked a half mile from home and come home for lunch, and I was assigned the task of cooking her hot lunch meals. My cousins would feel so bad for me as my mom would always find faults and at times threw the plate with the meal out the back door. Another another Cinderella story. I'm going to end here as it's getting long. I still have to talk about mommy's behavior to my brother, her taking me to England, leaving my brother in England at age 15, her control over me during my two marriages and my children, her illness and how she said, I love you, Carol, five minutes before she died. It wasn't voluntarily done. I'm not sure if you can tell if my mom was a narcissist from the first story. The worst is yet to come. Best wishes to you and Charlene. Thank you, Ollie. Sincerely, Carol Stuff. Don't know what topic you'll find appropriate for my story, but if you want to use this 1950s pick for an icon, you may do so. Very cute. Well... Without getting into what's going on with you and your son, I will tell you this. You have the typical beginnings of another black Cinderella. Okay? Your mother, and this is, and, and I noticed this especially with, with island black women, Jamaica, um, a, any of the Caribbean, any, uh, any of the Caribbean Haitian, Jamaican, um, anywhere in the Caribbean, black women, it's this. They hate being black. It's they're racist against themselves. And then they take it out, not on their sons, they take it out on their daughters. It's like they hate their daughters more than any, like they just resent them like, oh, look, another black woman. And it's because they hate themselves. But the sons are royalty. The sons are royalty. So what I would tell you, Carol, right off the bat, and I don't know why you would think this is all that long, because it, it, it's not, is you have all the foundations for your mother to have basically, basically sabotaged your relationship with your son. I'm sure your mother... Son, son husbanded your brother where it was basically wasn't really a mother's son it's like she was married to your brother right I'm not hearing about any other man around I guarantee you she son husbanded your brother and I'm sure when we get into this story deeper we're going to find out how she undermined your, your ability to, to, to parent your children, to parent your son, and I'm sure this is where most of your problems come with from your son, okay? Because you've probably have gone through life being controlled by this woman, even though she's dead now, okay? Jamaican women especially, they love to make you think they're powerful. They love to plant the seeds of sometimes voodoo, sometimes Santeria, sometimes they just want you to think they're powerful, but they want to get you from beyond the grave, as do most narcissists. But what you have described to me here is, you know, the beginnings of obviously a lifetime, a, a lifetime of narcissistic abuse. And this comes from, you know, your mother not liking being black. I can tell you that. The, you know how many black women talk about the pinching of the nose, the abuse, being treated like a slave, being forced to wait on your mother hand and foot. 
well, if that's what your son saw your mother treats you like to be that you're a servant to be waited on hand and foot and if your son sees your mother treating his uncle your brother like royalty well what do you think he's gonna what do you think he's gonna come away with it's the way it goes so thank you so much for your contribution and your story I look forward to hearing more of it absolutely I hope this helps as a beginning basis. Uh, thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to help keep it growing, expanding, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all of this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.